China is being called a country of Shanghai. What does that mean? Shanghai is a Chinese term, literally meaning mountain fortress or mountain village. But it's not because there are actually fortresses and villages built on the hills of China. Rather, the modern usage of Shanghai means copycats and refers to businesses founded on fake or pirated products. These kinds of businesses have been prevalent in China in recent decades. March 15th is the annual national holiday to fight against counterfeit goods in mainland China, but the copycat industry is growing rapidly. Advanced copycat methods are constantly evolving, and many global brands have to pay a huge cost for dealing with trademark copycats in China. In 2006, a Guangdong businessman named Chan Baosheng preempted the registration of the Tesla trademark in both English and Chinese before Elon Musk's entry into China. Tesla then sued China for trademark infringement in 2013, and the two parties reached a private settlement. Similarly, Apple was planning to launch the iPad tablet in 2006, and found out that two iPad trademarks had already been registered by Shenzhen Proview Company. After court mediation in June 2014, Apple had agreed to pay 60 million USD to the Chinese firm to settle the iPad trademark dispute. While conducting business in China, former President Donald Trump also got into disputes involving trademark infringement. Back in 2006, when he was doing real estate, he applied for registration of Trump and other trademarks in China, but his application was rejected in 2009 because a man named Dong Wei had already registered the same one 14 days prior. Trump has been fighting a lawsuit for trademark infringement for nearly 10 years. Just days after he was elected president of the United States in 2016, the CCP trademark regulator ruled that Dong Wei's trademark was invalid, and Trump got his trademarks approved. However, not everyone is capable of becoming the president. The Japanese brand Muji was not so lucky. It was sued for trademark infringement by a Chinese copycat company and lost its appeal in December 2019. They not only had to remove the logo from their products, but also had to compensate the plaintiff, the copycat company based in Beijing, with 625,000 RMB. Of course, these examples are only the tip of the iceberg. Moreover, the cases of genuine brands losing lawsuits against copycat brands only further encourages and promotes piracy and plagiarism, and the number of counterfeiters only continue to grow. In August 2019, the famous hot pot chain Hai Di Lao went to a court in Changsha with a Hunan local restaurant named He Di Lao because of trademark infringement, and the court ruled in the first instance that the restaurant did not constitute trademark infringement. In Chinese, Hai Di Lao means scooping from the bottom of the sea. He Di Lao simply substitutes the word He meaning river for Hai meaning sea. The company Hai Di Lao was then forced to apply for 177 similar trademarks in a single day on October 28, 2020, to prevent further copycats. Others, like the well-known Lao Gan Ma brand and the internet giant Alibaba, were also forced to register frantically. Starbucks, a famous global brand, had also registered dozens of trademarks that may be copied. Germany, known for being a global leader in engineering and technology, has set up an international award called the Plagiarist Award. Chinese companies won the top ten spots in 2019, and again took six of the top ten last year. The hysteria behind these trademark-grabbing registrations may be really unbearable to watch, and perhaps under the pressure of China's current economy, it is necessary to give some peace of mind to foreign investors. China's patent law was implemented in 1984, and it has been 37 years since then. In November 2019, the Chinese government implemented the amended trademark law, which added the prohibition of malicious infringement of another's trademark. Finally, starting from 2020, some Western companies saw rays of hope and started to win and obtain compensation in trademark infringement lawsuits. 
For example, at the end of April 2020, the Chinese company New Barlin lost its lawsuit and was required to pay 10.8 million RMB in damages for infringement of its trademark being too similar to New Balance. Against this backdrop, the widely publicized China Jordan infringement case finally came to a conclusion last April. The CCP Supreme Court ruled that the Jordans copycat lost the lawsuit. Previously, this copycat company had won several lawsuits and was even planning to launch an IPO on the Shanghai Stock Exchange in 2012. But this is only one of the few successes in which real brands have beaten their fake counterparts in a country full of copycats. Under the guidance of the CCP government, the mindset that copycat is justified and plagiarism is not a crime has taken root in China's public opinion environment for nearly four decades. Many Chinese experts and scholars have defended the copycat culture. They argue that the copycat phenomenon should be understood as an inevitable phenomenon during the nurturing period of the market economy. They define copycat culture as a kind of folk wisdom and innovation, and identify the phenomenon as a kind of copycat industry. In the propaganda of the CCP's media, many of them actually sing praises of copycat culture. For thousands of years, China's traditional culture has been one of honesty, but the Chinese Communist Party has changed this culture since it became the ruling party. The very concept of Shanghai culture is deception and counterfeiting. In terms of technology, there is no innovation; instead, it is plagiarism or even stealing technology. In the face of the challenges brought by the copycat industry. Enterprises have to cut research and development expenses and reduce innovation activities in order to reduce cost. The copycat culture does not promote the sustainable and healthy development of enterprises. On the contrary, it really hinders and inhibits innovation activities. It is difficult for Chinese companies to create their own brands. The main reason is a lack of an environment that encourages innovation in China today. The environment makes Chinese companies unwilling to bear huge R&D or patent costs. In addition, the top management of Chinese companies would rather spend more time interacting with government officials, who can guarantee the company's profit. The CCP government has also vigorously promoted the money supremacy mindset to the Chinese people, and that they can do whatever they want to make money. Keep silent and make a fortune was a famous saying of former CCP leader Jiang Zemin. Copycat business can work with low cost and low risk. It doesn't cost too much to register a patent, but the benefits can be thousands of times greater, and the penalties are light. In such an environment, it is difficult to expect the wave of copycats and piracy in China to go away. China is an ancient civilization with five thousand years of history. And the Chinese are often regarded as very intelligent people. Perhaps many Chinese who have retained those traditional values do not want their country to become a copycat country, nor do they want more and more smart fools to surround them. There has been a secret movement among people in China to quit the CCP under an alias or even a real name. Perhaps this is a way for Chinese people to express their desire to be rid of the CCP culture. Return to traditional Chinese culture and move closer to universal values.